Good morning. Boy, that's loud. Boy, that's, that's, that's loud. loud. I, feel, I feel professional. I do too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's different than we do the podcast from my kitchen where I'm drinking coffee with no pants on. But, uh, <laughs> but this is the difference. I do have pants on today. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to um, the live version, live from FDIC, the Larry Conley radio show. Um, usually I would have my brother David with me, but they said they wanted the ratings to be, go up. So we got rid of David for today and got somebody a lot more, a lot prettier and a lot smarter, and, uh, and my good friend Terry Reed here. So Terry's going to join me today as we get things kicked off on a Tuesday at FDIC. And um, man, this is a this. We've been doing it for a few years upstairs in the in the little room off, like it's a broom closet or something. Yeah, we do it there, but it it's it's a big deal now. It's down here. You can see people. We feel popular. Around. You feel popular. Yeah. You feel yeah. you know people walking and walking by and looking and pointing and waving. So yeah. uh, I stepped my game up a little bit. You know, I noticed they they you got on makeup, but they didn't give me any makeup. What's up with that? No. Oh, I just put yeah. a little bit on. So just to, a, just okay, a, just a teeny bit. Just yeah. a teeny bit. Yeah, okay, just a teeny bit. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I drove in this morning from uh, St. Louis, beautiful downtown St. Louis, Missouri, um, and um, I would have been here yesterday, but my son got an award. He's yes. graduating from college in three weeks. And he had got some kind of award last night, so I had to stick around for that and do the do the dad thing. So um, got up early this morning, old dog thirty, and headed due east on on I seventy, and got here to FDIC this morning and ready for a great week. Um, yes. But anyway, I want to. Um, it's going to be a weird week for me just because of the obvious elephant in the room, the hole in the hole in the system with um, my good friend Bobby Hall not being here this year. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But before I get started talking about me, which is one of my favorite subjects, no, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not that conceited. I'm really a shy guy. But um, I want to um, say um, talk about my friend Terry here. Um, you know, you meet people in the fire service. We met years ago, and we find ourselves at different conferences and 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 kind of getting to know each other um, through not only our love for the fire service but our love for excellence and things of that sort. So, but one thing I noticed that every time I would go somewhere, and it was in Terry's backyard or Terry was there, um, David and myself would land, and Terry would be like, "What time are you landing?" and just become our concierge and <laughs> and we really i just want to tell you we really appreciate that because a lot of times you know we was you know thumbing our way down the highway to get to the hotel or in a cramped up prius in the uber <laughs> you know talking about you know uh, uh where you're gonna put your luggage we'll put it on our lap but terry has always took care of us and, and always been there just that kind of that that spirit that that we enjoy that when we show up somewhere we know if you're there, we're going to be taken care of and, and vice versa. So, oh, absolutely. So the anyway, so the same, same thing. Yeah. Thank so, you. Same uh, thing happened. So David couldn't show you. up. David's doing some filming in Atlanta. He'll be here tomorrow, and uh, we'll we'll do our thing on Thursday. But um, but it might be even better. But uh, once again, needed somebody to jump in and 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 Terry dependable as usual. So <laughs> my good friend Terry Reed. She can see she's beautiful, got the hair working, got the makeup working. <laughs> uh, I, I know they make firemen this cute, you know. So, anyway, so Terry, tell us what you do in, in the beautiful downtown Baltimore. Uh, um, I work for Baltimore County Fire um, 20 years in the department, and uh, I am a captain, and it is busy. Wow. I love my job. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I was on the volunteer side, just recently in February, um, I not on the volunteer side anymore. Just mm -hmm. more career. Career mm -hmm. is just taking a a high road for me. Right. That it's just really really busy. Mm -hmm. um, I just part of a lot of other organizations. Mm -hmm. um, just teaching and just staying busy. Mm -hmm. um, have a wonderful family. Have grandkids and grandkids. Yes, I have three grandkids. You got grand? I got one. Oh, yeah. she's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Maya's she's beautiful. Born September third. It was the third of September. It's the day I've always remembered because that was the day 
My granddaughter was born. <laughs> anyway, yeah. enough about my granddaughter. You got three. Yes, I have a 13-year-old granddaughter. I have a four-year-old granddaughter and a three-year-old grandson. Look at you. Yes. And don't look yes. like you got grandkids. You I know? do. And I can give them back. I'm right, so right. proud. That's why I can't wait I love to spoil, them. spoil Maya when she gets her name is Maya Denise. I can't wait to spoil her uh, when she gets older. Guess what my and, oldest uh, granddaughter's name Maya Denise? No, Maya. Maya, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. I knew we had, yeah, yeah. I knew we had something. I knew we had it going on. So cool. So, um, so anyway, you're here this week. You're doing double double duty this week. I am doing double duty. So yesterday I taught recruiting for all the right reasons for the Women Leadership Conference for Women in Fire. Mm-hmm. Um, it went very well because it's something we're really struggling with within the fire services mm-hmm. recruiting. Mm-hmm. Um, the generation we have today, they're looking at it like, mm, I don't know if I want to go into fire service. Right. And they're very tech savvy. And, mm-hmm. and it's nothing wrong with being tech savvy, sure. but I really believe that we're going to have to connect with them. We, we have to connect with our generation sure. nowadays to figure out where we can get them integrated with mm-hmm. our fire service because mm-hmm. the fire service isn't going anywhere. Right. right. And we re- we're going to need them. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of us are getting older to the point that we are going to need to pass the baton. So yeah. we're going to need them available to to do the work. So. Yeah, we got to get real creative about our succession planning. And I think we got spoiled in the fire service for a long time. You worked, you worked such a, a great career. You was an example in front of your community and your friends and your family right. and somebody was always ready to step up to the plate to say hey uh, I want to be a firefighter too and show them the way mm-hmm. but uh, with that assumption I think we kind of dropped the ball and didn't see the trend come in it's like eh maybe I don't want to be a firefighter and if I am maybe I just want to work here for a few years and then work somewhere else right. but they said the average person now is probably going to have um, 10 jobs before they retire that I is can't, true. I can't imagine. I grew up in an era where you got that one good job and you worked there forever. Yeah. You know, they you, like, found you dead at your job. So that was, that <laughs> but was, it was just, it's so different now. And, and, you know, everything, everyone has a phone, the apps on their phone. Everyone wants to be entrepreneurs. And I, I totally get it. And a lot of people in the fire service do have second jobs and things like that. And I really think that they, they'll be able to do that as well. Mm-hmm. But some people just want to do things on their own time frame, but emergencies come when they come. Sure. And uh, you have to love and enjoy what you do. And, mm-hmm. and, and I, I do, I love and enjoy to go out and, and sadly, sometimes it's at their worst times, but right. to help them and to, especially if they recover, that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's just heartwarming. Now during your class, if you know, you was talking about this subject, what were some of the takeaways that you hope people got from the class so they can go back and they help with their um, recruiting and succession planning and things like that? So a lot of things I was uh, talking about apprenticeship programs, cadet programs, um, camps, or even having a, a, a day that you can open up your volunteer department, your um, career department and just show people what the fire service is about mm-hmm. or either you know just part of the hiring process everybody mm-hmm. doesn't do CPAP mm-hmm. some people have a, a PAT testing which is a physical agility test mm-hmm. so when you have that physical agility test you're put through a process and you have a certain amount of time that you have to get through that right. testing so everyone's testing process is different mm-hmm. but talk to people about the testing process. There's no secrets about what we're doing in a fire service. We're not setting people up here to fail. We want people to be successful, but we want people to want this job as Mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's benefits, it's it's longevity here. Um, We have to look out for a whole lot of things. And that's some of the concerns that I have with some people that say, hey, I want my own job, I want my own business, that's great. Mm -hmm. But do you have health insurance? Mm. Uh, do you do you have life Pension. insurance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some things in life that we have to remember. We have to take hold of, and I really just think that people are just seeing as far as they can see mm. versus um, looking ten or fifteen years down sure. the road. Um, yeah, that's different. Um, one of the guys in my area, and uh, you probably you know Eddington Stewart. Yes, and um, one of his marketing. Um, messages was when he's trying to recruit um, firefighters to be interested in the job he says you know literally speaking 
if you do this in the, the career and, and, and especially depending on where you work, right. basically through your whole career, a million dollars can pass through your hands mm-hmm. doing this job. Yes, it can. Yeah. I mean, I, it might have passed through, but it kept going. Cause oh, I, it I did. Didn't Mine passed me. I said, I don't right, see right. it. So I don't see, where, <laughs> where's that million dollars? Yeah. There I guess when you have four kids, uh, you yeah. know, a million dollars goes quick. But literally, it's a it's a good job. It's a noble job. It's a service that we love. And, um, and somehow we have to convey the message that it's okay to love the job. It's not a... Um, a times gone past type of thing because as you alluded to emergencies are going to still happen Thank it's you. not like you know a long time ago when y'all was fighting fired up that, you know, that emergencies yeah. happened back then we don't have emergencies today yeah you have emergencies today matter of fact you got probably more um you know other than just being a firefighter we're more all of all hazards yes. fire department yeah. if you don't if you're not evolved into an all hazards department um, you kind of selling your community short. Well, w- for the firefighter, that could be an exciting thing to yes. learn all these different new ways to really help people and uh, help your community and then get paid a nice salary. The fire service has uh, raised my children, uh, has fed us, has, um, you know, uh, put a roof over our head, things like that. So I'm grateful to it. I didn't, yes, I didn't initially get the job because I was excited about being a firefighter, I say, man, why won't, why would I want to do something while I'm running in somewhere where everybody's running out? Why why would I want to do that? But when I started doing it, I was like, wow. I'm because we were taught, once yeah. you were taught the concept of it, mm-hmm. and we were taught the safety measures of it, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm saving, oh, I'm going to save some, oh, I'm going right. to put some, fi- oh, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. No, it was a great, t- it's been a great run. Um, I did 30 years in St. Louis, and now I'm in Collinsville, Illinois, which is right across the river, the Mississippi River, and um, I'm the deputy chief of training there. And um, so even though I had to get used to getting up every day and doing the nine to five administrative thing, I'm gonna tell you, right. the, um, the um, hey, people, wait, there, there's Devon the Simmons <laughs> there. Oh, yeah, the Devon <laughs> Simmons, oh, God. Oh, you, you didn't see that when we was up in the, in the broom closet doing this. It's Devon, <laughs> yeah, there you are. Hey, Dr. DeMond, like, oh, I'm coming for you, Doc. I'm, I'm coming get, get my, you, DeMond. I'm, I'm going to come. I'm going to get my doc. I just signed up on my master's now, so I'm coming for you, brother. <laughs> so it's going to be Dr. Larry Kyle. Hey, how you doing? Hey. People just waving at us. Back at you. Yeah. Back at you. This is, just, great. This, is, this is great. Yes, I'm, I like this. My ADHD awesome. kicking in. Yes. I can't Woo-hoo. concentrate on the conversation waving at people. Hey. Hi there. You know, I use my radio voice. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. high voice. I feel high like, wave. oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's 25 minutes on the downside of the hour for the morning show with <laughs> Terry Reed. It's a, Larry uh, Conley. Larry Conley morning show. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, but, but like I said, it's, it's a great, hey, what do you, before you came here, uh, before you agreed to do this, I brought um, Lil Onk, and uh, Lil Onk right here was going to do the show with me. Even though he doesn't talk, but that's that's a bobblehead of, of me. It's kind of cool. I huh? like that. Yeah, I like that. It says really always like says that. yes. You know, so yeah. be careful what you're asking me. Okay. So it's, uh, well, so since you're here, but I didn't want Lil yeah. Onk to be mad. He, he so. just yeah, just let him yeah. sit right there. Lil he's he's doing be, a good job. He's going he's to support support bobblehead this week. So okay. Um, so we'll be getting around FDIC. So what Lil <laughs> Onk thinks about FDIC, you know? Yeah. So. Good but, experience. Um, so you're teaching the class you said um, tomorrow. Or I'll be to I'll be teaching recruiting for all the right reasons tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay. Room 206. So right after opening ceremony. Right after opening ceremony, Man. I'm gonna. That, that's a good time. Yes, you got it, it's hyped. definitely they, a good time. Busting out the the all turn, they're looking for rooms to go in. They yep. see your room, they come in there. Because everybody's going to be so excited yeah. to you know get everything started. But that could be extra pressure too, because if they if they kick butt at the opening ceremony, you don't want to be a dud after that. You well, want to you want to keep the hype up. Well, and then, you, then can, are you ready? Then for I, it? I, I can you handle it? Absolutely. Job? Absolutely. All right. I that's got this. One, no. Yes, I got everybody, this. Everybody thinks I can get them after, but you got to. Got to keep them. If it's here. Yeah. You don't want to go here, open the ceremony. Down no, here. no, you can't do that. You that. Gotta, no, yeah. you can't do okay, that. Good. You either got to stay there and go up or just stay there. Yeah. I've been here for you. a minute, so I'm just passing on some wisdom. I appreciate you. Here. I appreciate your support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there'll be, will it be the same class that you taught already? 
yes, or it's it has some. It? It's a version of it. Yes, mm-hmm. it's similar, but just trying to and it's a it's a class for people to be involved too because okay. I want to hear from other departments. Mm-hmm. I want to hear what they're going through. Um, I try to tell people. Some people are saying, "Hey, I'm volunteer." Oh, okay, we're all the same. Mm-hmm. You know, I. That's one thing that when we all go out here to do our job, we're all the same people. We are not, oh, your career, your volunteer. Right. No, no, we're not doing that. We're all going out to do the same right. thing, and that's important for and me. And fire and emergencies don't care either. No, ain't like they a, don't. Ain't like when you show up and you volunteer, the fire say, oh, you volunteer, we're going to burn different than if right. you were career. Absolutely. It's, it's still the same. You got to have the same training. You got to have the same methodologies. You got to have... Um, all the same things, no matter whether you pay to volunteer. Matter of fact, it's, it's more gangster to me be volunteer because you ain't getting paid for it, that's, you know. But that's true. you you have the same commitment. So, and most people don't realize since you always see career kind of taking the the spotlight, so to speak. Is there more volunteer? Yes, it in is. In the United States than they are um, paid. There there sure is. And and I appreciate it. I, I came up through the volunteer system initially, and that's where I initially got a lot of my training. So I'm very, very grateful mm-hmm. for being a volunteer. And then I... What made you want to volunteer? Um, back in 1995, um, my mother went into cardiac arrest. Mm-hmm. And I just watched the volunteers come in and uh, I, and at the time I didn't know they were volunteers mm. and I just watched them come and work on my mother and um, she did pass away. And I just, at that time I was still like, what do I want to do with my life? And I was like, you know what? And the, the little rapper from the intertracheal tube, mm-hmm. 7.0 was left at the house. They cleaned up everything else, mm-hmm. but it wasn't on purpose. And I was like, wow, maybe I can do that. Mm-hmm. And from that point on, wow. It really pushed me to say, and it helped me, you know, organize what I wanted to do with my career mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So Good very, deal. very grateful. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That's what did it. A and rapper been, got you into the job. A rapper. I mean, no, I'm not. No, a seven, I, 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 seven, a, a seven okay, point yeah. oh rapper. I thought it was Lil, Lil Wayne or something. But no, no, yeah, it was, it was seven point oh. So, okay, so far, I got <laughs> a little you. rapper. <laughs> But I'm grateful. Right, right, right. Hey. <laughs> you can make up a rap about the yeah, rapper. Yeah, right. right. But I got Man. a lot of them 7.0s, yeah, so yeah, I could. Yeah. Well, there you go. You dropped a couple of your 7.0s. If I send a picture that. to you, don't laugh right, at me. Right, right. 7.0. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, okay. You know. um, but seriously, uh, no, I didn't. I, I kind of got into it by accident. Um, my wife at the time, I'm not married to her anymore, but my wife at the time was like, I was trying to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know how to spell it, but I was trying to be one. And she was like, uh, you know, it's good, but it's feast of famine. Like some some weeks I'm, I'm making all kind of money, and then some weeks, you know, it takes a dive. And, right. you know, we eating filet mignon one week and ramen noodles the next week. And it just she couldn't she couldn't deal with the, um, the, the ebbs and flows yeah. of that. And so, um, so her cousin was a firefighter in St. Louis uh, named Adam Long. And a lot of times people might have seen this picture. He has a Pulitzer Prize winning picture of him saving the little girl. He pulled out oh, wow. and coming down the ladder with her and trying to do CPR coming down the ladder. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that picture was captured and it won a Pulitzer Prize. Oh, wow. So it became a good um, advertisement for the St. Louis Fire Department. And uh, so I met Adam at a few family functions, and he was like, you know, you need to take care of my kids and get a good job and quit trying to ebb and flow and eating Raymond noodles and filet mignon, and it, she, can't take, she can't take the pressure. I was like, all right, let me go apply for this job. Right. And, um, but what appealed to me, I'm going to tell you, wasn't so much, I wish I had this story where people said, I was born to be a firefighter. My cousin, my uncle, my dad was one, and we, we sat at the um, firehouse, and I helped wash the truck. I don't have this story. Mm-hmm. I went down because I said, "You only work ten, day, 10 days a month, and you get paid this much money. That, that might be that might be interesting. <laughs> I might get do that, you know." So I went on that strength and fell in love. That, and it it's like, so wow. much more to it. Yeah. I mean, you again. I wouldn't have met you mm-hmm. had I not been in part of the fire service. Sure. Again, like you said, traveling and going to conferences and conventions and things like that. But 
it is it is a lot of love for the fire service. And like I tell everybody, it's always good and bad sides to anything we sure. do in life. But we have to learn to balance those things mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. and just, you know, you just go with the flow. Right. You know, and conferences and things became something that became an offshoot. And my whole paradigm thought was just, well, I'm going to work here, see if I like it. Um, I know I had the luxury of doing 30, 35 years. Um, Adam had a great, great career. And I thought to myself, well, I can emulate that and, mm-hmm. and, and feed, his, feed his cousin and, you know, live happily ever after. Um, but I made the mistake. Oh, there's Forrest Reader. See, Forrest Reader is right there, too, right there. That was he, he just passed by. Forrest. Yeah, it's one of my hey good Forrest. friends. Forrest Reader. Hey, hey Forrest, Forrest, how are you? Hey. Hey, they can hear us out there. They can right, hear right, us. Right, right. Looking sharp for I like yeah, that. I'm about to borrow that tie. I like yeah, that. You look yes. good. Good. Forrest Reader <laughs> Magazine. Go. You go, guy. <laughs> hey, this is cool. Yes, I'm a, it I'm is. Do this each year. I don't want to go back in the closet. In they the broom pro- closet. I want to be out here. They probably said they the people. only ones yeah, just sitting up there just waving at everybody. Waving at people like, like you ain't never been. Like yeah. My mother, like you ain't never been nowhere before. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a few places. But anyway, speaking of conventions and, um, and seminars and things, I would um, read a lot mm-hmm. when I first came on the job because I was like, Somebody heard a quote that anything that could kill you, you want to know as much about it as you can. Yes. So I took that to heart. I'm like, I, I mean, I know when I raise my right hand, I'm saying part of it is that I'm willing to die. Right. But I was like, I just don't want to unnecessarily. Right. You know? Yes. Um, I want the NIOSH report to say it was God. Mm-hmm. And that's it. They didn't have no human error on me or my team. It, this NIOSH report going on one page. It was God. Next, mm-hmm. next, next, next report. You know, but um, we still have uh, some of those that yeah, go yeah, out, and yeah. I'm but, right, I'm walking around with fire wipes. They like I'm gonna get, no, I'm gonna wait for you. Yeah, I'm gonna right. wait Come for you to out. wipe your face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna okay. Get the cancer off I'm, of you. Yeah, I'm 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 patient. Yeah, we're gonna help you. Yeah, out I'm gonna help that. you. But when I started reading about um, you know different things, I said, man, these some Forrest Reader. One he book writes books and. The Rick Lasky's and the uh, Frank Viscusos and the, the uh, illustration skills of Paul Combs and and yes. so all of these different people I was reading about um, and I was like wow this this where where are these people instead of just are they in the basement somewhere writing mm-hmm. or or then they were like well they're at these different conferences so I was like well I need to go to a conference and see what it's and all find about. Out where they are. And, um, and so I started going to a few conferences. And I didn't really want to go. I mean, it was cool when I showed up that you can network and party and all that kind of stuff. But I really went to start trying to learn and learn to do my job better. And that just became an organic, natural evolving thing that became a thing like, well, maybe I could teach or mm-hmm. maybe I can, you know, and you just start saying, challenging yourself to like, if they can do it, I can. Right. So I was able to balance um, 30 years. Um, it, I started out at the slow fire house, but had um, the rest of my career pretty um, busy engine houses. So I was able to sometimes practice a lot of what I've learned outside of the box of a firehouse in St. Louis and learn what the national practice is doing, what are other people saying, um, what what are things that can help me be a better team member and then eventually become a better leader and all that kind of stuff. And next thing you know, I'm blessed enough to be at the, on, you know, the big daddy of all the conferences, FDIC, and then come and teach at FDIC. And then a couple of years ago, do the keynote there. FDIC. Yeah. That was even bigger. I'm sitting in the audience looking at keynotes like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they doing would, wonderful. It'd be yeah. a hoot to do that one day, and then you know, twenty twenty one. Guess what? You awesome. Know, we got you called, did so. a fantastic keynote. Yeah. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely amazing. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. It was amazing. The collaboration between David and I. We were trying to figure out how we were going to do it. David did the best of what he does. You know, he's yes, in the he film did. industry and mm-hmm. movies and things of that sort. And then, um, and then I do my part, and we talk to Mommy Lane, who you know she does the podcast with us. Yes. And she said, just I love Mommy do the, Lane. Do, do the best mm. of both worlds, and when we did the best of both worlds, that's what you got at the 2021 um, keynote. So um, yeah. it was a um, it was a labor of love, but wow, you know, to go from 
just sitting in the firehouse thumbing through books and magazines right. and now you know these people on a first name basis is kind of surreal to me still yes and, it is. and none of it one thing i like about fdic and 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 the some of the people we mentioned and there's many more but it's only an hour show but <laughs> but there are many <laughs> more but they don't have a kiss the rain mentality you know, sometimes people are famous in their own industry, and you're like, "Hey, Mr. Glasky," you're like, "Excuse me, son, take a, take a number, and, and you have to kiss the ring too." Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't me, have that I'm here. I'm from North St. Louis. I don't kiss nothing, nothing like that. No, I don't do that. You know, no, I'm that's from, probably why I'm not married anymore. Yeah. I don't kiss. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> that's another story. That's another podcast. You know, but what I'm saying is that it's a very they they make time to talk to you. They, they do. make time to say, "Hey, what's up." They give you resources. This new job I got in Collinsville, uh, being the training chief, uh, it's a blank canvas. Build it how you want to build it. And I can't tell you how many times I've called resources and they say, hey, I got you. Next thing I know, my email is flooded with information and resources and things that sort that I can like say, hey, let me take this. And they say, hey, you ain't stealing nothing. It's right. already out there. And get it, make it Collinsville personal. And then move ahead. And that's the great no thing about networking. Yeah. And you're doing the same thing for others yeah. because I can call you simply and yeah. I do the same thing. I yeah. call you and I ask you a question and you give me the resources that I need. And I know it's just not for me. Yeah. It's so many people that will do the same sure. thing. So sure. we have to work together mm -hmm. and in togetherness. This is how we can do a whole lot more because you don't have to recreate the wheel. No, it's no, already yeah. done. And some people don't realize it's already done. Yeah. If we would just take that ability to just mm -hmm. talk to one another, mm -hmm. just have those little conversations and right. get to know one another, yep. you know, it, it makes things so much easier. Oh, most definitely, most so definitely. I'm thankful that, you know, that's something that I'm doing and I have been doing. And yeah. I'm, I was, Again, I'm grateful that I've met you and, you know, we've we've done a lot. And I was grateful to be in St. Louis mm -hmm. when you had your ceremony. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that like yeah. the just the most I was like, wow. Yeah, we own we own that. Uh, we went to the council meeting. It's like we've never seen this before. I <laughs> like, mean, there was a people, lot of people were everywhere. They yeah. was like, what is this? Yeah. What did we do wrong? Everybody <laughs> showed up with their uniform <laughs> on. It was like, what did we what did we get ourselves into? I um, think, she says Baltimore, and right. this is St. Louis. What, yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, you know how, like, you know, when Jaws said, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. They were like, I think we're going to need a bigger council room. Yeah. But it was fun. I appreciate yes. the support of everybody coming. Yeah, um, didn't nice. have to come out, but did. And and a lot of people were from out of town. So I, I felt good, and my mother said it must be a testament to how many people you've really tried to help and oh, be yeah. inspiration to up the years. So that was a... Um, right. That was still a very humbling experience. I appreciate it, you know. We uh, appreciate for you. sharing it, sharing it with you guys. Did you appreciate it too? Yep. Yeah. Let's <laughs> see. Look at. Of course, he's gonna say yes. Of course, he's gonna say yes because I'm <laughs> smacking the back of his head, you know. Um, I didn't want to um, uh, forget talking about um, the um, why FDIC is gonna be weird for me this year. Um, the um, of course, everybody knows, and I'm sure everyone is going to mention in their podcast in some kind of way about uh, Bobby Hill. Hey, there's Forrest again. Hey, Forrest, wait, get some, I tell you, uh, we're shouting them out there. Well, Sorry, we're hey, interactive. You want to talk about somebody who helped with resources, that guy right there, that's the resource. You know, I call Forrest, it's just stuff. I mean, he even brought me a cup of coffee. Look at it, two cups of coffee. Look at right? that. And Forrest, I tell I'll you. I'll tell you, that's a good man right there. there. Right. No, I don't. I want you want to come in and say something for us. Yeah. Don't give me a coffee because I have to. I, I, I have to use the bathroom before the, the podcast <laughs> is over. You, know? you get this age, you know, you have to watch what you're drinking during the podcast. That's all. That's why I'm only sipping the water and not really drinking stuff that's a diuretic. I learned that in the fire service. The words like diuretic. Oh and yeah. Stuff like that. Yep. Uh, exactly. For you lay people, that means you have to urinate a lot. So yep. yeah. So. Something mindful. <laughs> mindful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I can't use the other words because it's a family show. But yes, uh, it is a family show. We'll but, keep it family. Yeah, keep it keep it family. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was going to mention that um, before um, Bobby Halton was the Bobby Halton. You know, I met Bobby years ago um, in St. Louis. They were doing a um, 
he was working for a company, Burroughs and Rock Hill, and what they do is come in and prep you for promotions. And so, um, so I'm sitting in the class, you know, my last, uh, cleaned out the bank account, I think it was four or five hundred dollars, take the class, and back then we trying to raise your kids and all that, that's a lot of money. You yeah, know? it is. I mean, today, retirement money, it ain't too bad of a hit, but back then, that was a lot of money. Yeah, we was but I was like, hey kids, everybody share this pack of Raymond noodles because <laughs> <laughs> daddy's trying to get promoted, you know, <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, met Bobby there, he was, he was the main trainer that came in. And I really just liked his style. He didn't come in preaching at you or um, the instruction is only what I say. It was almost like he was just having a conversation. And during right. that time, you learned something. Yes. And I just thought that was an amazing style of teaching. He was real versed on this stuff. He didn't have to look at the PowerPoint. He even have to look at the material he gave you. Yeah, turn to page 37 and it, it says this. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, that's, that guy's good. So... So meeting him there, and then we we talked during the break and decided afterwards, let's talk after right. class. And we took him out. Hey, where's a good place to eat? And took him out to eat, and um, and just had a good informal exchange, mm -hmm. and stayed in touch all these years. And and he, I think at that time he was in um, he was a battalion chief, and eventually became a fire chief in in, in Texas, and then um, onward to the um, to uh, working for Penwell mm -hmm. um, uh, Fire Engineering. Right. Um, we talked throughout the years, you know, just he was always a great mentor. But the reason I bring it up is because it's not only a huge loss for FDIC, it's a huge loss for me personally. And not only can I, there, there are a lot of people who had impacts on me being promoted and advancing through the ranks. But the person who had the most impact was Bobby Halton. Right. And um, I'm, I'm, I was a captain in St. Louis because of stuff I learned from Bobby Halton. Um, this, this blessing as being the deputy chief in Collinsville was because of Bobby Halton. And Bobby called me and he was like, hey, you're a deputy chief in Collinsville? I said, yeah, he said, that's where I live, buddy. Collegeville, Oklahoma. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it just got a weird, just you know. But he was the first one out the gate to just you know, um, you know, give me resources and you know I'm here to help and things of that sort. So it was a huge impact on my um, professional career and as a friend, my personal career because we would just talk right. about anything. And we had our uh, times where we didn't agree, and it turned into some pretty heated conversations then, right. you know. But one thing that um, I was really appreciative for is that Bobby and I could be, we came from two different parts of the American experience. So neither one of us is necessarily wrong. We just it was strong in our opinions about stuff. But what, what I really enjoyed is that I had never had anybody do this, even family members. We could end a a very tumultuous conversation and agree to disagree. Yes. And you know what he would say before I hang up? I know. Love, you, love you, Love brother. you, pal. I love you, brother. He, I don't like he would tell me, love you, pal. Love your brother. We just got through arguing. You know, don't nobody <laughs> argue. You know, uh, in North St. Louis, you try, you're trying to go over their house and beat them up. <laughs> you, know, you don't disagree with me, you know. But love you, brother. And that just became something that stuck with me and also became a good example for me too because you might have disagreements in the firehouse. Yeah, It should always end with love your brother, love your sister, love your pal, whatever, because we have an intimate relationship. You go, I go. I've, I've trained myself over the years not to hate people, especially mm -hmm. in the firehouse right. because sometimes people get pushed a lot, especially now that um, social media, uh, has really pushed things faster information yeah, so we draw on lines so, social lines political lines uh, racial lines all that kind of stuff we can't afford to do that in the firehouse because of their intimate relationship if you can really go down the ho hole i don't want to have to think twice about grabbing you you know right. but you got to be careful because if you just had a bad exchange with this person even though the t-shirt doesn't say 
you know, you say you go, we go. Right. You might not feel that way if you just had a bad conversation with this person. Right. So you got to be able to love your brother by the end of that shift, end of that conversation before you head out. And yes, so absolutely. that's always going to stick with me no matter what, just that simple phrase of um, love your brother. Yeah, I and try I'm to teach that. my personnel to uh, – <sighs> it's, it's always – tough we're professionals so your personal opinions should stay personal and you should always stay a professional mm -hmm. but um um i can tell you me this was probably one of my toughest fdic's trying to get my i was just as discombobulated trying to get myself together to mm -hmm. get here yeah. um as much as i enjoy i love it i love to come here this is the one time i can tell you I couldn't get myself together. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I knew I couldn't come. I knew I had to come right. because if I didn't come, I could just hear him now. Um, but I'm going to continue to come. I'm going to continue to, to live that legacy because Bobby pushed me. He strived me for success. Um, I met him five years, about seven years ago mm -hmm. now. Um, through Angela Hughes, mm. I had met him, mm. but you know, at the end of the day, uh, it was last summer. I was going for a bureau chief position, which is equivalent to a battalion chief in my mm. department. And I asked him a couple questions. He was like, "You have all the qualities, but I'm gonna tell you something. They're not gonna pick you." <laughs> he said, "I'm gonna tell you." He said, "I'm gonna tell you what to do. I'm gonna show you how to do it because you have the qualities. Mm. You already doing them, mm -hmm. but they already have picked who they want for that position." Mm -hmm. He said, "I'm a guarantee." You. He said, I, I just want to see, oh, everything you wrote was just fine. Just change this word. One word he had me change. He said, watch what I tell you. Mm -hmm. I said, they didn't pick me. He said, what you mad for? I told you that. Mm -hmm. He had already told me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't upset. He had already told me. He said, just keep striving. Just right. keep working. Right. You'll get it. Right. You'll get it. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like, okay, so I don't have him to go back to when yeah. another position comes mm -hmm. to again. Mm -hmm. But I got you now. <laughs> yeah. You got me. I'll, I got you I'll now. help you out. You <laughs> got to change two you. words for me. I'm a little yeah. harder. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, when we, uh, when Dave and I first put together the, um, our personal leadership, the um, personal leadership training we do, um, the glue leadership training workshop that we've been able to try, Bobby had a big impact on that. Yes. Matter of fact, he was one of the first early adapters to it. Um, um, he, when we did our first major thing in St. Louis, we kind of did a soft opening, if you will, in St. Louis at the community college I was working part-time at. And um, I was talking to Bobby about it. He was like, well, hey, buddy, let me let me um, come up and help you um, help you with that. And I was like, don't you got, like, busy Bobby stuff to do? He was <laughs> like, I'll, I'll make out the time. And he came to St. Louis and, and, and for two days helped us um, – um, roll it out so to speak and he had just seen it on paper like you know how how right. we wanted to look he hadn't seen david and i do it but he saw it on paper but when it came to him talking commenting um, um, supporting reinforcing from a bobby halton standpoint and people leaned in it validated more than we ever could because we were you know nobody's in the sense of who are these guys where right. everybody knew who Bobby was, but he articulated it even better than what we wrote it because he had really studied and leaned into it. And that's why one of our first posters has him on the poster along with David and I because <clears throat> he was one of the first people who really believed in what we were doing. And um, and then we you know, got the opportunity to try here at FDIC, which is – very intimidating the first year. I think that was like 11, 12 years ago. Right. And very intimidating because I know this is the big daddy, the granddaddy, the big show. Mm -hmm. uh, this is it, you know. So right. you and, and here's what I was telling David before we got started. I said, firefighters are the most honest people in the world. See, if you go work for, like, do our presentation maybe somewhere else in the corporate America, they may be a little polite, you know. Um, right. They may not come back after lunch or whatever, but firefighters are sometimes. going to yeah. Firefighters are going to stand up and tell you, uh, "There she is, hey Theta girl." Hey. <laughs> it's more people. Indianapolis, one of the Indianapolis finest. Yes, right there. she yeah, is the yeah. best. You go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
but uh, but firefighters will tell you they'll they'll stand up in the middle of your presentation. Yes. This sucks. And yeah, you'll uh, be get like, off the stage. Yeah. And you're like, I mean, they don't care. There, yeah. there's a, and that's the good and bad of firefighters. That's just they, the they, harshness yeah, of it. It's yeah. not, please don't take it personally. Just being honest. Yeah, yeah. But that's they're just, just being honest. Say you, and that means you probably got to go back to the drawing board and see <laughs> why am I not connecting. Exactly. And uh, we've been lucky enough all these years to connect. But I told David, we can we can make it here. We can, we can make it anywhere. I might make a song about that. No, but you know I, what? I when we took, <laughs> uh, it was a group of us from Baltimore County that we took the leadership class mm -hmm. when we was in St. Louis. Yeah. And it really gave me a, a sense of knowledge on how to deal with people better. And it's just like when you're in a situation, how do you deal with that situation mm -hmm. versus going a direction that could make it bigger than what it yeah. actually should be? Yeah. So you help a lot of us formulate and all of us had different feedback, which mm -hmm. was important to, you know, help us formulate just dealing with certain situations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. calming that situation down. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like the role play. The role play, it really put it in position with a PowerPoint saying, and then you do this, and then you do that, and then right. you do this. You actually put it into full force for us, for us to actually visualize mm -hmm. what can actually happen, right. how people's demeanors are. You can actually see the certain things, their body language. Mm -hmm. And you'd be looking like, what the world? I mean, because that's the stuff that people actually do, and it, right. it, it was a lot of realism with that. Mm -hmm. So it really did help out, mm -hmm. and I appreciate it. Yeah, so. that's, and that's why I was tell people say what well, you know what's david's role he's david's not a firefighter he's an actor out of um out of um hell's out of atlanta you know we grew up together in st louis but we moved to atlanta because atlanta out of california is the biggest film industry film state film industry outside of california right. um what's good about having david as a excellent improvisational actor is my secret weapon is that when we present the scenarios and you have to play it back in the role play you know, David, oh, he does David, well. David, I mean, oh, he does David can awesome. bring the tears. He can bring the anger. He can bring it all. And uh, so if you come out to our class on Thursday at 3.30, um, from 3.30 to 5.15, um, Proven Leadership Habits of Optimum Personal Performance <laughs> here at FDIC, um, you will see what I'm talking about. You're just not going to have a class. You're going to have an experience. Yes. And I'm not just saying that because it's our class. We didn't want it to be another PowerPoint. And we didn't want it to be another role play to where everybody gets a trophy and goes home. Remember, it doesn't always end well. It sometimes it ends messy, but we can right. learn from that because that's what life is. You can't you can't learn this stuff here and go back to your firehouse and say, "Hey, it worked at FDIC. Let me go right. try it here." Because you know, firefighters will will it will feed you your lunch for that kind of stuff. You and know, sometimes they, you have they to get when they're being worked. You right. Know? Sometimes you have to give people an opportunity to resonate actually what happened. Yeah. Um it just takes people long. And people are just different at times. Sure. But we just want to make sure it doesn't go to a place that it shouldn't at yeah. the end of the day. And I almost did a couple of times. David can really know David really knows how to poke the bear with his acting. And uh -huh. we've had people that want to fight us before. We, oh, we, wow. had, to, we had to go on break one time. We were like, hey, hey let's all take a break and we had to pull oh. the guy to the side and say Hey, uh, what's what's going on here? And he was like, oh, I just get so mad. And uh, I said, Well, I'm glad we found this out in a safe learning lab. Yeah, because exactly. you might have got dealt with <laughs> in uh, real life, you know. Yeah, we and, don't want uh, that. To we happen. don't want that. So we try to help you out here. But but David's that good. Right. I mean, if you if number one, pay attention to what we try and teach you. Use that to solve the scenario problem, and then you may not be emotionally poked by. David <laughs> right but, but sometimes people just they they zero in on the wrong thing like right. you have to look at everything in its entirety right. and don't just tunnel vision on mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. because some people do that and yeah. then they get the wrong message yeah. and that's not the expectation mm -hmm. so well if you go on our website you'll see um, basically everything that we talked about uh, you probably saw a snippet of it when we did the um, keynote and if you come to the class you'll see the hour 45 version, but the, the version that really works for everybody to where you get um, diverse scenarios, you get a lot of time to work these things out, talk about it, and actually have a complete learning cycle is when we do the eight hour class. So we're really excited about our eight hour class. But um, but it, it is an experience. We create that way on purpose. I had, I had the content and the uh, experience coming from the fire service um, David 
is a writer, producer. He's written a um, few movies. He's uh, won, written a couple of award-winning movies, as a matter of fact. Yes. Um, and his wife, Sharon, um, she acts. So they're, they're a team down there in Atlanta. So when you take the professionalism of knowing how to uh, put together these type of um, presentations, because not only just does film for entertainment, he does industrial films for different companies and things of that sort. So uh, when you're able to put together a working um, template in how it can impact people, because you can have great information, but if it doesn't have any impact, you know, right, you really yeah. don't get anything out of it. And then some people are so busy being entertaining, they don't have any content. Right. So we tried to make sure we had a good recipe of both. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we teach people the empower model. Our empower model is, is uh, something that um, we use not only for um, working in our respective industries, but we use it personally so that you always don't always have to put the empower model cape on when you get to work. Right. Practice it in your downtime. Practice it with your family. Practice it with your friends. Practice it in your community. Because the reason we are so uh, big now on uh, personal leadership is because unlike a long time ago, 30 years ago when I came on the job, people didn't have cameras at the radio, cell phones, things like that. A lot of people now are getting fired now because they don't mm -hmm. have their personal leadership intact. That spills over to their professional um, job it does. and they end up losing their job because they said something stupid, did something stupid, and before you get back to the firehouse, it's already in Germany what you did. Yep. <laughs> you know, just and they trying fast. to take it off. Oh, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, oh, it's, it's gone. gone. Once you, it's out there, it's, it's out, out there. there. So you got to be careful. So, so we just have to understand that um, now more than ever, that personal leadership is important. Yes, I know. Yes. I know we got a lot of we got a lot of great classes here. Mm -hmm. I'm on a committee to help pick the classes. So. I know coming across my desk, I had 300 cross come, come across my desk. Wow. So, um, and other people had 300 or so. So I saw a lot of great submissions. So there are right. some great classes. But if you come out and check out our class on Thursday at 3.30, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. And it's going to be a great tool for you to take back and reinforce yourself and fortify yourself so you can maintain a quality career. Absolutely. And it's multi generational. It's not, you know, the person, the most seasoned person can take the class, get some out of it. To the new people we're talking about can have a better quality career. Like you said before, everybody can just get a little bit out of it mm -hmm. or they can get an abundance out right. of it. It's all in what you want. Yeah. And, and, and you have it. Your mm -hmm. class is awesome. I've taken it. I love it. And then what's happening is sometimes I'll think I know the class. I have it all. And then they change it up. I yeah, say, well, yeah, what yeah, just yeah, happened yeah. You here? You keep but it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. You change yeah. it up, make it good. So keep it fresh, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta, keep, Gotta fresh. keep it fresh. You know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we want to wrap up. We only got uh, an hour this time where normally we have um, um, 10 hours to do the show like a marathon. But you know, <laughs> but um, we're going to get on and get our FDIC on. We're yes, going to meet some we people. Are. We're going to reconnect with some old people. Yes. And get to know some new people and, and come on out to Terry's Club. What's name your class again? It is Recruiting for All the Right Reasons. Recruiting it's tomorrow, right reasons. 10 a.m. All right. Yep. Come out to open the ceremony. I know it's going to be a great dedication, a great time. Um, go yes. to Terry's class. Check out our class on Thursday. Go to Larry's class. Yeah. Larry's class is going to be awesome. It's going to change your life. I can't yes. guarantee a lot of things in life, but it's going to. Is it going to change your life? Yep. It, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your <laughs> it life. Says yes all the time. You know. <laughs> so anyway, but learn something. Take something back to your communities and, and utilize and make your, it. Please. Make your fire service better. Yes. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Live from FDIC. I like this setup. Just let's do this again. Thank um, you. All kind we of appreciate people walking you. past and stuff like that. Keep it. Keep, this is better than the broom closet. Yeah, I love it, it. is. I, love I it. like yeah. this. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. we'll talk to you later and have a great FDIC. Thank you.